So we are thrilled to have our guest join us uh, to talk to us about pursuing a degree in nonprofit management. And we have Christina Manns joining us today. Uh, so glad to have you here. And I'm excited to jump into this conversation yeah, with you. Yeah. But before we do that, Christina, we, of course, want to make sure our viewers and listeners uh, know who we are, or at least have a reminder of that. So hello to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group. We are so extremely honored day in, day out to have the ongoing support from our presenting sponsors, also known as our besties, <laughs> over at Bloomerang American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, and nonprofit nerd. Julia, I know we do this um, often, but I like to remind our viewers and listeners that these companies are here for you. They're here for our missions, uh, critical missions around the globe. So lean into them because they want to lean into you and your mission. So um, fantastic group of, of leaders. And without their support, we wouldn't be able to have such a robust archive where you can find all of our 750 plus plus episodes, including this one, Christina, in just a mere few hours Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV, as well as those podcast listeners, cue us up there. I plan later today to take a long walk on the green belt and I'm going to queue up the nonprofit show. So <laughs> awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, um, so really excited, Christina, to have you here, Christina M. Manns. Um, and you are working towards your degree in nonprofit management. Um, so excited to have you. So, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about where you are, what you're doing. You know, we just jumped in an elevator together. We're going up to the <laughs> floor. Uh, tell us, tell us, you know, how you got into this degree. Absolutely. Well, I've been working in non the nonprofit space for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I, like so many of us, started by just being in that space and not having any formal training. Yeah. So I learned by doing, I learned by observing others. I eventually learned by watching webinars, reading articles and listening to podcasts. And I still do those things and they're exceedingly important for us to continue to do those things and to never stop doing those things. I'm thrilled that I found both of you and the Nonprofit Academy and the Nonprofit Show because I love your content. It is exceedingly valuable. I love the straightforward program format and I'm happy to be a part of it. But what I decided was that I was in a season of my life where I could make a change and that I knew I needed to pivot and I needed to up level. Mm -hmm. And I currently work in higher ed and I've worked in private education for many years, off and on in different capacities. But last summer, I decided to take my education and professional development super seriously. And I started looking at programs. And I live in an area where there are a lot of universities. Mm. And I found Drexel University, which happens to be local to my area. Wow. They offered a master's in nonprofit management through the Goodwin, uh, the Goodwin College of Professional Studies. They also offer a certificate in nonprofit management. So I pondered whether I should take the certificate program, which would be compressed and an introduction to a multitude of topics in the area. But after reading the background information for the full masters, it spoke directly to me. I thought, this is for me, I'm doing this. So I put into motion the entire application materials and process. And I was thrilled to be accepted into the program. And my first quarter, it's a quarter semester, it's a quarter program. Okay. So I'll explain that just briefly. It's a two-year program. It's online. And we take two courses at a time okay. and we're all working adults. Mm -hmm. And then we have two classes worth of homework that we must address each week. We get weekly assignments and there's a learning portal that we submit all our work into each, each week. Some of the classes have offered live sessions with the 
professors and our cohorts, which enables us to have that FaceTime. It's virtual, but we have this type of FaceTime together to get to know one another, which is nice to have. It puts the names to the faces and helps make it feel more personalized, which I appreciate. Um, so I feel that um, this is a blessing to me that I'm able to do this. Yeah. It's an enormous challenge. <laughs> I bet. We'll get into that in one of the other slide yeah. sessions. Yeah. But, the, but the reason to pursue it was that I felt that doing the webinars and the article reading and the podcast and observing others felt piecemeal to me. I felt like it was a la carte and I didn't have the context for how this all works together, even though I work in a, in a nonprofit currently and I wanted to move into management. I want my next success story and my next adventure to be in a managerial position. I want to ha be able to level up in that way and be in a, in a creator's position. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that well, and maybe be an executive director one day, who knows what the future will bring. But in order to do that, I really wanted to have the foundation and build up step-by-step, step, right? Here's my visual aid, step, 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 <laughs> build it up so that I would understand how all the pieces fit together. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, very insightful. And I, I I giggle a little bit because I've heard a lot of professionals like yourself say they are working their way through their career by Googling, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, how to do this, how to do that. And, and I'm just as, you know, guilty of that. I go in all the time because best practices are changing, mm -hmm. dynamics are changing, workplaces are changing. Um, so I'm really curious to hear more from you about how you, and you shared, you know, you're currently working at an organization. How are you managing your current workload plus this, you know, uh, professional environment and, and how you kind of merge those two? I love hearing yeah. that. And it sounds like your entire cohort, Christina, is probably doing the same thing. Yes, we are. I work full-time at an uh, independent liberal arts college. And I'm an academic administrative assistant supporting four departments in the sciences. Wow. And so I support the faculty and the students in those areas. And a lot of my work is event management okay. and event organization and working in logistics and making sure faculty have what they need to do their best, uh, best work. Mm -hmm. um, I work in supporting uh, processes and work collaborative across departments, uh, managing meetings. I work with um, when they do faculty searches, organizing meeting and logistics for the people who we need to bring to the campus for that, or on the other end of things, supporting the faculty reappointment process. And I also help to organize um, a, a summer research cohort, and I do all of the registrations for them. So a lot of detail and, and travel yeah. arrangements for field trips and that type of work. So I wanted to paint you a little bit of a picture of what I'm doing all day. Wow. And it's not eight to five. It's, it sounds it to is, me like it's all the time, right? Actually, not stop. Well, this is, a, this is yeah. an interesting question. I am nine to five, and I do... I am, I do set a boundary with that. Oh, you do? Good for you. Yeah, I set a boundary with that. Um, come five o'clock or sometimes I have to work till 5.15 or 5.30. I make a point not to answer those emails if they come in after five o'clock because yeah. I'm not, I'm not on, I'm not on the clock. I'm not on duty. Of course, I still care all the time. Sure. I care very much. Right. And, um, you know, I, every, I, I put everything I've got into it when, you know, while I'm there, mm -hmm. sometimes there's a special project on the, that, that bleeds into the weekends and I'm there for it. I'm, I will do whatever it takes to be su successful in the completing the task, but here's what happens. I have a commute six o'clock supper time by, by seven it's homework time. So from seven to nine, minimum, I am reading, I am writing, and I am responding to my peers. Wow. I, sometimes it, I go till 10, sometimes I go till 1030. But to be honest, at my age, it's really tough to have a fresh brain 
after say 9 30 p.m because yeah. i have been up since 6 a.m and have been doing all these other things mm -hmm. and you're it's it's just it's proven we are not able to absorb uh, information as well when we're when we become tired yeah. and um, we're not going to be as creative at, the, at those hours so my threshold oh, is, is is 2 30 3 p.m <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then my eyes start to get a little blurry you know so I I can definitely empathize with this it yeah. sounds like you're really managing um quite well this schoolwork as well as your work time but it sounds like it has to be quite regimented right and so I love that you say you know, I, I honor my boundaries. I honor this time. It doesn't mean that we stop caring, but right. you're really managing the course rigor and the time. It sounds quite well. Well, I, I have to, because there's, like I said, there's only so many hours in the day, right? <laughs> and yes. you have to find a way to be balanced too. Yeah. I have to plan rest time. I have to plan downtime and frankly, time away from screens. Yes. It's such yeah. a screen-based life we're living. And mm -hmm. for our my own wellness, mm -hmm. I have to actually make sure that I say, no, oh, that's it. It's time to go to bed. It's time to get off screens mm -hmm. or it's time to take that walk, time to get that fresh air. Um, so I, you know, I also um I, I'm gonna pivot a little bit and I'm gonna go right into the managing the rigor and the time, is that I'm also a founding board member of a startup nonprofit. Oh. And we are um, in the in the early stages. I'm working with the founder, and I'm really excited about that work. But it's so serendipitous to be taking this coursework now because I'm able to directly apply yeah. the best practices and knowledge that I'm gaining directly yeah. into what uh, what I would say is our manuals, is oh, our yeah. manuals for our boards, communications practices, all of the things that we need to do to be successful. So I'm I'm very excited about that. But um, the rigor is there. Make no mistake about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes I have 10 articles to read. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to write a two to three page paper. Sometimes it's a seven to 10 page paper. Luckily, that's not all the time. And then I have to make sure that I'm responding to my peers every time. And that that peer response is so important. And it's really where a lot of learning happens. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like um, what's also kind of wonderful about the rigor and the grad student environment is that the pro the professors are accommodating. If you have a big project due at work or if life happens, so to speak, and you're just not going to make a deadline, you just communicate that to them and they will accommodate that. Yeah. I have been able to turn in all of my assignments on time and I feel very proud of myself about you this. Should. Yeah, you should. But That's big. It, Sometimes it, it, you know, it has gone right down to the wire and I thought I did it. I've been triumphant. And so I'm trying very hard to stay within the frameworks that they've, that they've developed for this. Mm -hmm. And the, and the professors also say, we don't want to give you more than you can handle. We know it's a lot. So there's acknowledgement there. There's good communication about that. But after returning to college, after a 30 year hiatus, mm -hmm. It is a challenge. Um, it's, it's, if I was doing this in my twenties, I would have a different energy level. Sure. <laughs> like you said, past, you said 33, 30, but I'm like past nine 30, it would be different. Yes. There's no, there's no all nighters being pulled. There's no hordes of caffeine being consumed. That just doesn't work for me. So but what I, about like during your day, do you ever say like, okay, during your regular, uh, your, your nine to five, are you having to read articles during lunch or are you, you, you yes. kind of pivoting a little bit or are you really segmenting that off in the off hours? No, oh, I am. It's lunch and learns all every, okay. every yeah. lunch is a lunch and learn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm so I'm curious I, about that because there's yes. so much to pack in. There's and if you don't lot. give some breaks, I okay. able to find time for the nonprofit show. I'm honored. <laughs> Oh, how does this work? <laughs> yeah, maybe we could be an assignment through your degree program if you could talk to your professors about that. Absolutely, absolutely. I will try to integrate it. Yes, and um, I'm, I'm happy to integrate it in any way that I can. Well, <laughs> so it's so needed. We talk often about 1.8 registered nonprofits in the U.S. You know that number fluctuates. But the other thing that you know we see often, and I'm really curious, Christina, if this was kind of the impetus for you going back to school, is you know I remember 
<clears throat> excuse me, in the economy crisis of 2008, 9, 10, a lot of people went back, you know, to further their education. And I think we saw that trend as well, starting in March of 2020. Was that part of you wanting to get back into, you know, kind of the, the coursework? I wouldn't say directly. Um, I had some other life circumstances happening. And so it was just uh, closing the chapters, closing the book, and I needed to start a new book. Okay. I love so, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just, it was time. It was time. And I knew that I wasn't satisfied with the way things were just as they were. And I want, and I, I was already so interested in these topics and already doing all this learning on my own, mm -hmm. but I felt like, how can I, how can I genuinely expect someone to hire me as a program manager or a, a donor uh, relations uh, coordinator or, or write a fundraising professional on being on the fundraising team mm -hmm. um, without having the, the background. I mean, sure, I could have jumped right in and said, oh, I'm going to get my CFRE training. I'm just going to go straight for that. But you know what? I'm not positive that is my calling yet. Mm -hmm. So again, maybe it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of really interesting points about being a fundraiser. And I think I would really enjoy connecting with all kinds of really interesting people and connecting them with the mission. I would love that type of experience. But again, I felt like I was was jumping in, would be jumping in from the side. Mm -hmm. I just wanted the entire story of the entire framework at my, you know, at, within me to draw upon to say, okay, now this is where I know I need to go. I want, it's also helping me to, to forge the path. Well, I love your perspective and I think it's really intelligent. And I also think it's probably um, a gift due to the season of your life and where you are. Um, and being that you, you have this, this, uh, journey that you're on and the things that you that you're seeing i'm really curious as to what is it that you're learning that's new and maybe even surprising because you you're in the you're in the trenches especially with this new nonprofit in your work what are you what are your like aha moments sure sure so the curriculum like i had mentioned before it's two courses at a time mm -hmm. and we have to take a slate of required courses, and then we'll, we take a slate of electives. Okay. And um, interestingly, in my first quarter, I ended up taking an elective that wasn't in the framework of the nonprofit management group. It was in the MBA group. Mm. And it just worked out that way with registration. Mm -hmm. But it's a, a course in a leading in dynamic environments was the name of the course. So a leadership course for- Love it for business people. Yeah. And in that course, I have to give you this context because it leads right into the a big surprise. When I took the course, I had not been exposed to concepts and theories of leadership in a way that this was in the way that this was presented. It was just case case studies and reports about leader behavior follower behavior, subordinate behavior, how the environment affects how a leader behaves and how a subordinate will respond. It was fascinating. And I learned a lot about that. This quarter, I'm taking the nonprofit leadership class. <laughs> and I am so fascinated by this. Material wow. is, has been um, independent survey data reports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that um, the survey survey samples of people in nonprofits, and it has an emphasis on post COVID um, activities mm -hmm. and how COVID affects what how they're looking and what their plans are. How is their programs changing? How has it affected your hiring practices? Where are your pain points? What are the pain points that people are expressing? Mm -hmm. How do we retain retain good workers? All of those important topics are in these reports. So one of the biggest surprises I've had content wise is how important data, how, what the important role data plays yeah. in how yeah. we do our work in nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when I told my uh, current professor about, I actually said to him, sir, I don't understand how this relates to leadership. I didn't, wasn't making the connections right away. 
because the Lord words leadership weren't really in the data. And he said, here's the surprise. He said, I have it in my notes here. The role of the leader is to define reality. Hmm. And that's the reality of your organization in the greater world, given your circumstances. Wow. And it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And so, th you know, you people will act a certain way over time. They're going to change over time. But will the leader change with the circumstances over time? Yeah. Is the leader looking at trends right. to discover what they need to be planning for next year? Mm -hmm. um, and then that so that was a big surprise to me is that we need to be making decisions, whether we are the executive director or the director of events or the yeah. marketing communications director, Whatever. wherever we are in the organization, we should be gathering as much information as we can and also help us know what's coming next. Yeah. I think it's difficult to know, yeah. but I, but I was in, I'm actually enlightened and encouraged to see that people are actually conducting the surveys. They're actually writing these reports and we can access them. And I don't know if I would have come across that by, my former way of learning about this. Right? You know, that is very tell um, right. uh, telling's not the right word, but uh, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. We love data here, as you know, Christina on the nonprofit show, really sinking our teeth into that. Um, and so it's, I'm fascinated knowing that that came into conversation in your coursework, you know, learning that, having these aha moments. What are you seeing for the future, your future? I mean, now I feel like you have intentionally gone into this to say, hey, open my mind wide open, open the possibilities wide open. So what are you seeing your future in the sector? Well, I feel like because I'm in the position of being able to be very intentional about my yeah. path, right, with this learning and, and, and personal development as well, it all comes together. I listen to a lot of Mel Robbins and Marie Forleo. I love those uh, types of people, authors that have talked about um, how we need to um, work with other people and mm -hmm. be in tune with ourselves. And it, and one really important thing that I've learned about is self-assessment. That's another really important in insight that I've had is that leaders and nonprofits need to be assessing how we're doing, how does who, who the person I am today going to um, adapt to what's, what's going to be happening around the corner, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, I have multiple choices here. Wow. That's I feel great. like I, I'm in the right place. This is where I belong. I like mission-based work. We don't get into this work to earn personal millions. We get into this work to meet a need and we can do that by unlocking the millions, uh, the personal millions of others yeah. that already have um, been very successful and that connect with our mission. And we need the technical skills to be able to communicate with those people in order to have partnership with them so we can solve more problems. We're in the problem solving business. So I feel like that's where, you know, the context of where my heart is. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of choices that I can make with this work. So I've been basically in the education area. I feel like I could stay in higher ed. Um, the new nonprofit startup is a job training program. So that's an educational program mm -hmm. and other organizations that I personally support are working with youth and uh, uh, job skills training and mentorship. I'm really into that, um, being able to work with people who may be in a disadvantaged position in society have had a, a rough go of it so far, mm -hmm. but where we can step in and uh, provide real skills and um, fellowship and community with them and let their voices be heard. And that's the kind of work that lights me up. So I, I, I see myself working maybe in events management that is a donor cultivation activity. Mm -hmm. I could see myself working uh with alumni relations, connecting with people in from a, a specific community and really, again, working with the events portion or working in 
um, just connecting with them on a personal level, maybe in just those um, fundraising activities and uh, being a partner with them and in, in maybe building that institution up in the, for the future. Mm -hmm. And I also am interested in exploring foundation work. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by this. Uh, I was really learning a lot about that during COVID because um, community foundations were providing so much help. Yeah. yeah. And they and the rules were changing. Yeah. <laughs> because of, of the situation that we were in. I'm not saying the situation is over, but you know what I'm saying at that time. Constant change. It was con that we're in a place of constant change. So community foundations were there. Uh, giving un other established foundations, private private family foundations found themselves in a situation where they could give unrestricted gifts mm -hmm. and they were loosening some rules or changing some perspectives by what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I could enjoy being in an environment where you're uh, connecting, your, your found the foundation is connecting with the people that you're granting to. Mm -hmm. And I could love you know, assisting the cohorts of, of grantees that you would sign on with and helping them reach their goals. I think that would be so exciting and worthy of my time. Yeah. Well, Christina, we don't have uh, a lot of time left. We, you know, these conversations go by so fast, but I'm so mesmerized. Is this something that was on your list like five years ago, 10 years ago, two years Gosh. ago? Like when did this really become this is what I'm going to commit to do. I would say that I realized I, I don't I don't think it was something that I committed to back then as saying this is my path because I've still been I was in other situations where I wasn't sure and I of course I I have family too so I was mm -hmm. in, entrenched in uh, raising the kids yeah. and yeah. day to day all the other things yeah. so. I feel like I have had enough experiences being involved in volunteer work mm -hmm. in other uh, community organizations that I was I was in it and didn't even realize it, right? Like we're involved in so many things yeah, yeah. over our lives. And then you go back and say, yeah, you know what? I was on the parish council. That's a nonprofit organization. And I was on the board. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Wow. Or I was uh, I was in Toastmasters International for 11 years, which is a public speaking and leadership training program. I was yeah. in, on the executive committee of Toastmasters for many years. That's mm -hmm. a nonprofit organization, a membership driven organization. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a lot of interesting um, experiences that kind of have have always been there throughout my life. And now I'm um, like I said throughout the presentation, I I just wanted to have brick by brick. I wanted to see how this whole house is built and then figure out where I can best serve others. Yeah. Well, well kudos it's... to you <laughs> Go ahead. on this. It's a true accomplishment, <laughs> testament to being of service, having that commitment. Um, Christina, going, you know, going back to school at any time, I think for me is always like, you know, really daunting, but I love hearing this story from you as you, you know, work towards this higher education degree in nonprofits. I think you've, you've probably touched on this for so many of our viewers and listeners that have also had this, you know, in, in their heart or in their mind to say, I think this is of interest to me too. Um, so I really appreciate you coming here and one being, you know, being an avid listener of the nonprofit show, but then also allowing us to have you here to share this insight from your perspective um, and wish you all the best. I think it's fantastic. I thank you so much for this opportunity. I hope it's been inspiring for others okay. and just keep learning everyone. Yeah. Um, but Julia Patrick's here. So glad to be alongside with you. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd. As we sign off, we also want to give gratitude to our amazing presenting sponsors, Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, where you can get a lot more education as well. Your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, as well as the nonprofit nerd. And um, again, our guest today, so grateful, Christina Mans, to have you here and uh, you know to really dedicate your life, your career to so many missions and to providing those solutions, which we definitely 
definitely and desperately need <laughs> those two words. But hey, so glad for all of you to join us today on President's Day. Many of you probably have the day off, but this is also in um, our archives, so you can access it anytime. So if higher education and getting back to school for your nonprofit degree is something of interest to you, I hope that you will um, take the inspiring words from Christina today. It's been wonderful. I really love having this conversation and and I think uh, we need to revisit this when you are finishing up your journey in, in education and see how, where you land. And I, I think it's gonna be great. It, it's a wonderful thing for all of us to be hearing this. And we certainly, as Jarrett said, we wish you well. As we end every episode, we like to remind ourselves, our viewers, especially Christina Mance, <laughs> stay well yeah. so you can do well, everyone. Have a great day and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you, ladies.